in season four, episode 14, Friend in Need, they have this whole big thing, like, oh, this is really important. And then it just immediately disappears as soon as Ahsoka, and in this case, Anakin, are no longer needed there. That's one of the traits of a Mary Sue, that as soon as they leave this super important thing, it's meaningless because they are the super important thing. Yeah. I'll be your The Clown Wars. The Trash Wars. Sometimes even the smallest doubt can shake the greatest belief. Then it's not very great belief, is it? No, not really. That's that's not how that works. Nope. If you have this great belief, it's not going to get shaken by a small doubt. Punch a hole for the gunships to get through. I know the drill, master. I know, no, don't, don't tell me. It's like, okay, what's the purpose of having him say it if all you're going to have her say back is, I know the drill. I know they're trying to be like, oh look, you know, they work like such a great team and you know, she's, she's grown so much. She knows the drill now. It's like, that they're, or they're doing the same old crap where, oh see, Anakin doesn't trust Ahsoka. He doesn't think she's good enough. Oh. Yeah, but it's like, I think they're trying to do the, oh see, they're such a great team. Oh no, they're gonna get split apart, right? Like, that's what they're going for, I think. But it's like, there's a million better ways of doing that. Rather than having him tell her something she already knows and her respond, yeah, I already know. That's the worst way of showing, oh look, they work so well together. They know what they're doing. They're perfectly in sync. She's grown so much. No, because back at the beginning, he would tell her something she should already know and she'd be like, yeah, I know. Wow, so much changed. Wow. Angry ship. <laughs> Problem. I've got buzz droids. How bad did you get hit? I'm all clear. You always have it easy, Snips. Weren't they supposed to punch a hole to make it like easy for the ships to come through? So by them ignoring the ships behind them, they're not really doing a very good job. And then the other thing is, is that like they have it that he gets them all off his top and he's like, oh yeah, no, I'm all clear now. But they're all over the bottom. But when she's like, oh yeah, no, I'm fine. There's nothing on me then there's nothing on her bottom or anything either. It's literal, like, plot armor. Yeah. Oh, look at Anakin, he's all covered with these things and then, you know, he can't get them all off properly and blah, 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 blah. Like, why didn't they have some of them go on her, right? And again, I think it's so, it's, oh, so they can have that bantery moment where she's like, oh, I don't have any. And he's like, oh, you're always so lucky. No, that's just called plot armor, Anakin. Also, this is another scene they're just ripping off from the prequels, literally the beginning of Revenge of the Sith, except with plot armor. You're trailing smoke. <laughs> Unconscious? Fly back to the cruiser. He's trailing smoke, suddenly he goes, oh! And then nothing. R2 says he's unconscious. Okay, whatever, take care of it. Unconscious? Fly back to the cruiser. Great team. They work so well together. She really cares about him and no concern at all. Oh, master, what's wrong? And then our two answers and oh, okay, whatever. He's just unconscious. No big deal. Uh, I don't, I don't know if you know anything about, you know, people, but uh, unconscious is, is typically a, a big deal. My name is unconscious in uh, Jedi Crash and she refused to leave his side. And now she's all like, eh, psh, whatever. So much character growth. Amazing. I feel like this is Ahsoka again, mistakenly thinking that her plot armor extends to other people. If you've seen that video where it talks about Ahsoka literally got knocked out so many times that she should have brain damage, but she's all hunky-dory because she's our little it's Mary fine. Sue. Yeah, so I, I guess she thinks yeah, getting knocked unconscious isn't a big deal. I mean, like, if you don't have any medical knowledge, like, unconscious could mean a number of things. He could be, yeah. like, bleeding internally for all she knows. His cockpit is full of smoke. Asphyxiation? Yeah, that too. Yeah, and, and it's like, okay, so you're sending R2 to fly him all the way back 
through that mess of like, you know, fighter ships that you, you just passed through. And he doesn't have Anakin to, you know, fly. And, and he's like an ace pilot. You're, a you're, damaged ship. A damaged ship piloted solely by a droid going right through the thick of the fight back to... The, how is this? An appropriate response. I guess you can argue that with Anakin out of the way, she automatically becomes the ranking officer, so she has to lead. But that obviously doesn't matter because in the next few minutes, she does ditch the mission to help Anakin. <laughs> well, and, and it's not like, you know, they have guys behind them and they're like, oh, Commander, you know, well, what should we do? And she's like, ah, crap. You know, do I help Anakin or do I, you know, continue leading the exactly. mission? They act like everyone else on this and, mission and just is disappear. non-existent. They just disappear. Yeah, that whole mission just disappears. It doesn't matter. It's completely yeah. irrelevant. Because as soon as they land, then, then they get called up by the council like, hey, come over here, do this yeah. thing. The setup is the again, setup is so always bad. trash. Always, 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 always trash. Because the the whole point is that like, oh, they weren't at the temple, so you know they couldn't have done it. So we can trust them to be the ones to to investigate. But the thing is, then they completely ditch that mentality as soon as Ahsoka appears to kill Leta, then they're like, oh, she must have done it. Well, okay, but she wasn't there. Does that mean nothing now? It's they literally like, made the council and look this, ultra stupid this just so thing. they could point fingers at the council and say, see, they're so terrible. Look what they yeah. did to poor Will Ahsoka. And then oh. just, just like in, in season four, episode 14, Friend in Need, they have this whole big thing, like, oh, this is really important. And then it just immediately disappears as soon as Ahsoka, and in this case, Anakin, are no longer needed there. That's one of the traits of a Mary Sue. That as soon as they leave this super important thing, it's meaningless. Because they are the super important thing. Yeah. What do you mean there's something wrong with the engines? What? You're trailing smoke. What do you mean there's something wrong with the engines? No, there's nothing wrong with that ship. That's just... No! What? Oh, that's not good. Again, when it comes to Ahsoka, there's little pieces that it's like, okay, I would like that if the whole thing were done better. Her face and the way she's like, oh man, that's not good. Like, that's funny. If it was like a character I actually liked because they'd actually been written well and the the previous setup, you know, hadn't been just total crap between her and Anakin, those moments would be like so much better. But it's like crap, 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 good moment, crap, 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 good moment, crap. Yeah. And it's like, Hmm, you have these like shining moments and like, look at this! Like that's so cool! They got like little cities on like little hammocks and then they have upside down hammocks! Why is everything ruined? I don't care if the landing zone is too short. Get that ship on the ground. He's gonna be on the ground ground, not on the ground. I don't care if the landing zone's too short. Well, like, you should. Uh, yeah, it, that's very important. And then the whole thing is, is that like, she doesn't use the force at all to like try and slow the ship so that the landing zone will be long enough. She just jumps on his ship, pulls him out, and then jumps off onto the ground. So then all R2 really needed to do was get the ship close to a spot that she could, you know, jump off with Anakin. And then she just, you know, doesn't care about R2 at all. Cause yeah, she's oh, I don't care if the landing zone's too short. And then R2 goes over the edge and then all of a sudden she's like, hello. Oh wow, such a shock. The landing zone was too short like he told you. And if he wasn't a awesome little droid with little, you know, rocket boosters, He'd be dead. And Anakin would literally be heartbroken. It would be like, what Duel was the name? Droids yeah, Duel of Droids all over again. I'm going after Anakin. Somebody has to save this skin. Someone like R2? Uh, apparently R2 is incapable of doing anything. Okay, it looks like they're headed straight into it. And why didn't she use the force to get the stupid droids off? Yeah. Like it wouldn't fix the engine problems, but like it would at least stop it from getting worse. 
Yeah, no, she's such an idiot. She literally could have just used the force to slow the ship down and boom. She would have saved herself, saved Anakin, saved R2 very easily. Because she like jumps off, nearly falls off. R2! Very funny. Very funny? I'm sorry, what about this situation was funny? Well, I think they're trying to play it like R2 purposely made oh, yeah, her he think totally that he purposely went off that, that edge because he purposely intended for that landing zone to be too short. <laughs> Are you okay, master? Yeah. And then even though he's now sustained more damage to his head, he's suddenly like, oh, I'm fine. What's up? Wait a minute. Wasn't I flying? Where's my fighter? How did I get here? I saved the day. You're welcome. Wasn't I flying? It's like, okay, he's got serious damage to his head. But they're all like, oh, no, it's just funny because now she can be all like, Ooh, well, you know, I think the day. Instead of being like, okay, do you remember what was happening? How many fingers am I holding up? Like anything like that. She's just like, Psh, whatever, this is funny. I saved the day. Like R2 did nothing. Without R2, Ahsoka would be long gone because she was just like, okay, we'll never deal with it. Wait, so and R2 was like, uh, wait, no, please. I need help. So can I need a little help? Run away, Seth. They were in the middle of this mission. It went horribly wrong. And then after it's all over, he calls up his men. He's like, hey, come pick us up. And they're like, okay, we'll just casually head over there. Ain't nothing going on here. No mission, what mission? We're just going for a casual flight, you know? We're gonna go pick up our boss. No war going on here. We're just doing Everything the funny. Everything is calm. They were supposed to punch a hole for us yes, to get through. And then they just disappear. Well, I guess the hole got punched. And everything Maybe the went, separatists you know? just like took a coffee Tea time. break. Maybe they're all getting coffee at, at the same, same time. time. Who could successfully bomb the Jedi Temple? Who could do such a thing? How could the Separatists infiltrate the temple? He's just like, what? It must be the Separatists! Anakin should be smarter than that. I feel like it makes sense for your first thought to be the Separatists. Because, like, you don't want to think that it's one of your own. True. At the same time, Yoda was like, hey, we need your help figuring out who this was, right? If it had been the Separatists, he would have said, hey, the Separatists bombed the, the hangar, and uh, we need your help to uh, track down the guys who did it. I feel like given the way Yoda approached it, and that it had to be them, and, you know, stuff like that, like, there should already be clues that this isn't just a cut-and-dried Separatist attack. We have to look at the possibility that it could have been anyone in the temple, even a Jedi. I can't believe a Jedi would attack a place this sacred. I can't believe they would do it. This place is so sacred. Well, maybe not to somebody who's gone to the dark side. You and Ahsoka will provide an impartial point of view. A Jedi will provide an impartial view. Well, <laughs> a, a Jedi who literally just voiced, I can't believe that a Jedi would bomb a place this sacred. Some very obvious bias there. Like, for pity's sake, bias. they're putting Anakin on the case? They don't trust Anakin! They don't trust Anakin. Ahsoka just showed clear bias that we need someone impartial, so you're in charge. <laughs> Was there literally no one else? Were they I having they a party? On this case. Like, like Obi -Wan a Jedi Obi -Wan convention? Reads. Were they having a Jedi convention literally. so that literally every single Jedi, except for Ahsoka and Anakin, who they obviously didn't like enough to invite to this party, were at the temple so there was no one else that they could choose from? Literally, like, someone like. Kenobi or Luminara would be infinitely better because they can actually display impartiality. Or what about the detective guy who they've shown like, several times? I don't times. see why they can't just have Republic authorities investigate. They established back in season two that they were involving the Republic in Jedi Matters. Yeah, and it's like, if you don't know who's doing it, right? Like, you should have one person from the public, one person from the Jedi, right? So that if, if it's someone from the Jedi, then the Republic person will be more objective. And if it's someone from the Republic, then the Jedi will be more objective. And if it turns out to have been separatists or whatever, then, you know, they'll figure that out. That would actually be, like, a really great arc. 
having a Republic officer and a Jedi working together as like a buddy cop situation. That would be so cool! And they've already had, you know, a few episodes with that detective guy. He's a recurring character, so it's not completely out of the blue to have him be part of this. Or let the droid, like the droid does the majority of the investigation anyways. So why don't they just like give it to a droid because they're objective. Exactly. Ah! I can still hear the screams. Do you believe what they said, master? That a Jedi could do this? Anakin's commenting on the fact that he, through the force, can still hear the screams of, you know, pain and terror and, and she's just like, can you believe that a Jedi was here? He's like, I don't really know you. Like, completely unfazed. So either she's not hearing it and she doesn't care that he can hear it, or she can hear it and she just doesn't care. Knowing Ahsoka and the fact that she's a total sociopath, she can probably hear it and she just doesn't give a crap. I mean, she literally watched a Twi'lek slave jump to her death and she was just like, yeah, so uh, this lady over here, I think I'm just gonna glare at her some cause you know, she sucks. I don't actually give a crap about this slave, but like, you suck. She, sh she shows more reaction to Mirage touching her than to Mirage provoking a woman to commit suicide. Yeah. I am Russo ISC, crime scene analyzer for the Jedi. I will be working with you. Did you see her face? He introduces himself, says he's an investigator, and she's just like... The scene from the Younglings arc, or I think it was Gennody, when they first introduced uh, Master Hu Wang, Gennody was like, well, we're gonna learn from a droid. I don't wanna learn from a droid. And in that arc, Ahsoka clearly showed respect for Huang. And now it's the opposite because this droid is encroaching on her Jedi territory. And she's like a feral little animal and she doesn't like that. The thing is like, he says he's an investigator for the Jedi. But both Anakin and Ahsoka are like, who are you? I've never seen you before. So has he just been like collecting dust somewhere? Or like, they I have get the impression zero... that for the Jedi meant, I've been working for the Jedi for the past who knows how many years. I took it that for the Jedi meant, I'm just working for the Jedi on this case. You and Ahsoka should begin the interviews. I would rather interview the witnesses alone. Many of the wounded have heard rumors a Jedi was behind this explosion. Take Ahsoka with you. It's like, the writers want me to force Ahsoka into the plot, so I'm here to do that. <sighs> Get in the plot! Get in there! <sighs> <laughs> well, see, it's, it's stupid again. The council's like, oh, we need you to do this investigation. And then they've got this droid that like either works for them or just got hired to work for them. And he's like, well, you actually would be better if you didn't help me because the wounded might not take kindly to you because of the rumors. And so it's like, why were the council so insistent that Anakin and Ahsoka do this investigation? Because obviously they have a competent investigator and... You know, the council we... said absolutely nothing about this droid. Yeah, why didn't they say like, oh, and by the way, you'll be working with so-and-so. But instead, they run into the, oh, who are you? And, oh, I, I'm this, and you, you don't need to help me. Well, we're gonna help you! Again, the setups, they're crap. Just a random thought, though. You know how I said Kenobi would be better for this? I just remembered Kenobi doesn't even show up at all throughout this entire arc until, yeah, like, the end, I think. He's in the trial, so and then the trial. He, he says... Sorry. He's an important character. Like, Anakin, in that case, should have been leaning on Obi-Wan, or like, Obi-Wan should have been making some effort to support Anakin because it was a tough time for him. But Obi-Wan's not even there. And it doesn't make sense because, yeah, after this episode, the investigation is considered complete, right? So why, why isn't Obi-Wan there? It's not like he's, you know, tampering anymore. Can't be trusted. I thought how this show just like loves to forget about its own characters. It loves to forget about its own plot points, its own characters, it's whatever it needs to, it just 
It uses something and then throws it away. And it's just like, okay, but that wasn't complete. You can't do that. That's crappy writing. Did you notice anything unusual about the hangar? Note her tone of voice when she's questioning these people. Does I'm just gonna say it. Ashley is a terrible voice actor. I haven't seen her do anything outside of this. So for all I know, she got better. She, her acting skills improved. And this is her first role. So obviously she wasn't going to be the best, but it sucks. Her performance sucks. I mean, the fact that they said it took like, what, six? They were six months into recording before they found Ahsoka's voice. And so then they had to go back and re-record half or more of, of the, the, the first season. And like, I don't entirely understand what they mean by like finding her voice, but I'm assuming it has to I do with the way she says things. They found her character. It was more to do with her voice, but like your voice is part of what makes the character. That genuinely makes me wonder though, what it would have sounded like originally. And the fact that Ashley said that she put so much of herself into Ahsoka is like, you're kind of admitting you're a terrible person. Well, th again, that's not how they see her. They think, oh, she's such a saint. She's such this perfect, righteous person. Because she's a Mary Sue and you know, Mary Sue's can do no wrong. Yeah, listen to Ahsoka's tone of voice when she's questioning these people. It's like they're trying to do some cop movie where they've now got the suspect and they're trying. Like, she sounds like she's questioning a suspect rather than a victim. Like, that's her tone of voice. It's because she's not capable of sympathy. <laughs> she looks down and her eyebrows kind of pull in. Did you notice anything unusual? Before you left the hangar. Yeah, no, that sounds suspicious. That doesn't sound yeah. empathetic. Did you she notice anything be unusual before you empathy. left the hangar? Wow, that was so hard. Did everything seem okay before that? It kind of jumps all over the place because yeah, the very first one sounds really like suspicious. And then the second sentence she says sounds okay. And then like, it just kind of bounces all over the place because then she goes and she talks to somebody else and it's kind of the same thing. One sentence sounds like she's suspecting him and then the next sentence sounds okay. And then the, you know. Yeah, no, her performance, Ashley's performance just sucks. Again, like, it I, could I hope be she's due to improved. the director. And it could be due to the director. It's like, and it's nothing against her as a person. You can criticize a person's performance without criticizing that person themselves. Like, it's nothing against Ashley Eckstein personally. It's just she didn't do a great job in this performance. Which is unfortunately the whole like differentiating between the role and the actor is unfortunately something the Star Wars fandom can't seem to do since yeah. they literally like cyber bullied the woman who played Rose Tico, cyber bullied. Um at best, guy who played Jar Jar, Jake, Jake Lloyd. Lloyd, developed mental health issues and ended up committing suicide because of the horrible treatment he got. The amount of crap that he suffered because people didn't like the prequels and they took it out on a kid. Like how sick is that? It's really sick. I hate this fandom. Fear makes even the most trusting individual irrational. He's like, fear makes the most um, trusting individual. Trusting indi irrational. No, that's, so, that's not so irrational. So distrust is irrational. Because literally a Jedi was responsible for the bombing. Yeah. So he's basically, he's basically aligning with Ahsoka here and saying, a Jedi couldn't possibly have done this. That's totally ridiculous, totally irrational. Yeah, I never even thought of that, but you're absolutely right. Which and makes like, him a terrible investigator. Yeah. Just like Ahsoka. <sighs> and no one is unbiased here. Just fire everybody. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, like, the, the whole thing at the beginning of the pithy quote at the beginning is like, oh, you know, the smallest doubt can shake the greatest belief. And now they're like, oh, that's irrational. What? So wh what's the message we're supposed to walk away with here? I think I know who did it. Who? Who is Jakar? Thank you. He's like, oh, I think I know who did Who? Oh, and who is this person? And you, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, uh, okay. And then, you know, he tells him, oh, thank you so much. I'm so sorry for what you've been through. I feel like knowing Ahsoka is more like, thank you so much for absolving the Jedi in this. 
thanks. Because we all know that the idea of a Jedi doing this is irrational. Looks like we need to find Jakar Bomani, Russo. Literally almost gleeful now. Yeah. Because, oh, and it's here's not a Jedi thing. now. Like, nobody has had any problem talking to Ahsoka. And then Anakin walks in and everyone's like, oh, Jedi. Oh, Jedi. <laughs> also, like, what? you questioned how many? Well, they only showed two. He would have had to have been the last one they spoke to. Yeah. I didn't get that impression. He just kind of casually spoke up there. They're not, like, doing this in an organized fashion. They're just going around like, Hey, did you say anything? Did you? Oh, I thought, so. oh, okay, D let's go. No need to question the other people. Because I've got what I want. Yeah, usually when they question groups, like at least what you I've do seen it on TV. Separately. You either do it separately or you kind of like to try and save time. You'll be like, hey, does anybody know anything about this? And then if no one is like, oh yeah, I know something. And even if someone, you know, says, oh, I know something, right? Like they will question everybody individually, but I think they try and kind of save time by like getting to the people who know stuff first, right? So they'll ask, hey, does anybody know anything? Talk to those people first and then have one person work off that information while the other person goes and talks to all the other individuals to get, you know, little details, maybe stuff that they didn't realize they knew something, but like they had actually seen something. But yeah, it's just like, oh, we're questioning this guy. And then that person's like, oh, I think I know something. And then, oh! Our work here is done. The writers. And again, don't it's. understand how an investigation works. But again, it's like, okay, they have to squish this all into a single 20 minute episode. They're trying to do this big story in a short amount of time. They could have done a montage. They do it all the time they in don't crime actually... shows. Okay, but they don't actually do very many montages in The Clone Wars. Maybe Filoni has something against montages. I don't know. Maybe. Well, they would, you know, but they help tell a story, so obviously he hates it. Because... Obviously, yeah. Did you find anything? No. I can feel the anger and confusion throughout the Jedi Temple. Russo and I have a lead, Jakar Bomani. They have a, a Ahsoka, did you find anything? Like she's interrogating him. And then he's just like, no, no, I didn't find anything. And then again, he mentions like, I can feel like all of these like things from everybody. And she's just like, <laughs> and then, oh, we got a lead. And then in front of everybody, Talking loud enough for others to hear, oh, we think it was this person over here, but we haven't been able to find him. Yeah, no, like in front of the victims, no less, you, yeah. c do you seriously think no one would be angry enough to hunt this person down themselves and possibly try to kill them if they weren't already dead or kill his wife, Leta? You're endangering people, you idiot! Well, it had to be well planned out to get past Jedi. Nobody suggests, hey, maybe they got past Jedi because they were a Jedi. Nope, they just had to be really good planners. Super planny. Plan the man. Riots going on. And you just openly give out the name of the person you suspect is responsible. Super smart. This is the guy who might be behind all of this. You know this man? He is my husband. Where is he? Oh, he does it here too. That's how Letta finds out. It's because he shows it in front of this riot. And she goes like, oh, that's my husband. And no one in that mob is like, that was your husband? You, you could argue they don't know why he's showing that, right? Like, they don't necessarily know, oh, this is a suspect, rather than this is someone we haven't found yet, or this is, you know, one of the victims, or anything like that. That's one of the reasons that she asked. See, that's a weird thing, though. It's like, she willingly fed her husband a bomb, and then she's all like, where's my husband? Where's my husband? I gotta go to the riots and ask, where's my husband? Oh, look, they've got a picture of my husband. Where's my husband? Where's my husband? It's like, it's so stupid. Yeah, no, she's screwing herself over. Okay, did you not know that the nanodroids could become a bomb? But she, but, she knew about the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. She's like, oh, you know, this Jedi 
approached me is like, we're gonna do something to change this. Here, feed your husband these things. Oh, okay. She what are they gonna a, do? She must have had a terrible relationship with her husband. But then why is she here being like, oh my exactly. husband. Exactly, she's an oh, idiot. She's an idiot. Everyone in this arc I is an idiot. I don't understand. Because literally, if she hadn't been there, the lead probably wouldn't have gone very far. Everybody does. Like eventually, I guess they would have found out where he lived and then learned he had a wife and then be like, okay, well, where have you been? But then she could, you know, there's a hundred reasons she could give. I have my own job. You know, I can't just take time off work because my husband didn't come home. I thought he was having an affair. Or, you know, like, she could say anything. Eventually, because the, the nanodroids were in the food and she didn't have any on her, then that's kind of the first clue. Well, it, you know, if she doesn't have any in her, but her husband had so many in him that he became a bomb and it was in the food, then obviously she knew it was in the food, so she wasn't eating that food. So eventually, I think they would still find out. But like, yeah, her being like, hey, I'm over her! It's just so dumb. Come with me. Well, maybe this wasn't such a good idea. Please, find him. But again, it's not like they tracked her down and then she's putting on this act. It's like, she's genuinely like, where is my husband whom I fed all the nanodroids to? He's supposed to be perfectly fine. She's really dumb. Yeah! It's like a whole new level of stupid. Like, I don't even understand. The writing in this show is genius! Oh yeah, totally. This to me is like the sci-fi fantasy part that I love about Star Wars. Like showing this cool technology and like... Based on the trajectory of the debris, the blast came from there. They literally show us the thing explodes and goes flying everywhere and she's like, hmm. Based on the trajectory of the debris, it looks like the explosion happened over here. It's like, uh, based on the fact that you just saw that explode, the explosion happened over there. G'day. That line would make more sense if they didn't have this beautiful technology thing, right? Like if they just, you know, had markings or whatever and people doing calculations and they're like, okay, well, you know, we had you know, all of these things flying out like that. Okay, so then, you know, let's, let's piece things back together. Oh, look, it looks like, you know, this is, this is the thing that exploded. Well, what was here, right? Like, but she literally just sees it happen and we see it happen. And then they have her say, oh, look, this is what happened. But they try and make her sound all smart, but it's like, oh no, now you just sound dumb. We saw this explode. Oh, look, it exploded over here. But I figured that out based on the trajectory of the the debris. Ooh. What? War. It actually was a Jedi. The one time that they admit it might be a Jedi. Right. Now we're chasing nanodroids. Last time we got a lead. Yeah. Now we get it. Oh, great. Now we're chasing nanodroids. It's a lead. Why are you so upset? Let's go find out how Jakar got his hands on these nanodroids. They found, you know, it's like, oh, I think Bomani might be a uh, suspect because I saw him around the area where the thing went off. They do no research into Bomani. They're just like, hey, we're looking for this guy. They get his wife in. They don't ask her any questions about him or like what he did or anything like that. Like they know nothing about this guy. He's their one and only lead. They don't do any investigation into him. They're just like, hmm, let's look at the trajectory of the debris, <laughs> figure out what exploded. And then they find the nano weaponry and then they're like, hmm, let's look into this Bomani guy. Yeah, you should have done that to be <laughs> like that would make more sense that they're okay like you know what did your husband do here at the temple oh well you know he was in charge of the the gunships you know he was a, a munitions expert you know very smart man like and that it's like oh well could he have been responsible for how dare you say that you know like he had to you know work so hard to get into the temple blah 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 right and then they're like okay well you know munitions expert okay well let's look deeper into the explosion and then they find the nano droids and then it's like oh we've got to you know, track this 
this guy down, right? Like to ascertain whether or not he was involved because that kind of points to him, right? Because it's this, this sophisticated munitions weaponry, right? Like There's... they're doing it completely backwards. This is not good writing. It's shoddy investigation work. Which, again, shows how crappy the writing is. These characters are not acting smart. They're not doing a good investigation. Nothing like that. Isn't that going a little too fast for you to make sense out of it? Have you found your car? I'll gather some Jedi and search the temple. A guy who regularly relies on a droid and knows that droids are often underappreciated and, and underestimated and no. Oh, how, how are you able to make sense of all that? And, well, you have you found him yet? Oh, well then, you know, I'll get some, you know, real people and we'll, uh, we'll find him. This isn't Anakin. This is some bozo. Knowing who your character is, is so important to, you know, finding out their dialogue. You can't just make up dialogue and then put it in the mouth of a character and call that good writing. And again, like this entire arc is supposed to be like inspired by The Fugitive. It's been many years since I've watched The Fugitive, so I can't confidently critique the movie. But like, I feel like it was a little better than this. Understatement of a century. <laughs> if you're inspired by something, you should at least show some like respect for the source material. Respect for the source material, but also show that you actually got something out of it. Rather than just Study. trying to shamelessly rip something off yeah. so that your work will get more attention or be more highly praised because you ripped off something that was actually good. <laughs> yeah, well see that's just it. Like if you like something, study it. Find out why it is you like it. Find out what makes it work and what like, because Ruby has the exact same problem. There's several aspects of it that like you can see the inspirations, but it's like they just watched it and were like, oh, well this must be why it's good. So let's just take that. It's like, well, no, that's not what makes it good. Like there's more to it, but they didn't study it. They didn't like actually take it apart and, and break it down, critique it and be like, oh, okay, that's what makes this scene so good. It's because of, you know, we've built up this about the character or we're trying to, you know, show this about the world. And so how can we change it, adapt it to mold that kind of same thing around our story and get the, a similar result? It's like, nope, just copy paste. Cause you know, it was whatever that, you know, made it good. Yeah, it's all just surface level ripoffs. Yeah, cause like the whole thing, like, you know, Ahsoka is, is wrong wrongfully accused. Well, that's the main crux of, of the fugitive, right? So we'll automatically have a good arc because she's wrongfully accused and has to prove herself innocent. No, that's not how that works. No, there's so many details that they just like flip or miss or like completely twist that just destroys what made the fugitive good. It's like, it's not as easy as just like, oh, person gets wrongfully accused and proves themselves innocent. There you go. We've got a winner. Wow. You can't just summarize something and then take those points. Like, Cinema Therapy, their video on um, Beauty and the Beast. He's like, it's the little things about the original animated version. Because a lot of people are like, oh, it's Stockholm Syndrome or it's, you know, you know, and so that, that's really messed up. And he's like, no, there's, there's these little details that make all the difference. And that's, you know, part of what makes the animated version better than the live action version is because there's there's these little things that add the nuance that make it this, not this. In the original, they slow down and they let you see the character's emotions. Mm -hmm. You understand what they're feeling, what they're going through, what they're thinking. Yeah, no, like this they're... whole stupid, oh, the Jedi versus the droids and there's so much tension there. And, it doesn't even go anywhere. What is the point of including it? Yeah, why? Especially with Anakin. When we were originally here, everyone was in person at the Jedi Council. And now you've got Shakti and Obi-Wan radioing in. Okay, everyone is a suspect, but it's just like, no, no, go off into the far 
reaches of the galaxy. I'm sure you're not guilty. So, you know, just go on about your life. I'm sure you're not going to try to run or anything. Everyone is suspect, but no one is suspect. You found nothing so far. Uh, yeah, we did? Why is he starting the conversation in this like, oh, you guys haven't found anything? Rather than them starting the conversation with, okay, this is what we found, but like, you know, we haven't been able to make any sense of it yet. We still don't have answers. The Senate will have a meeting to decide whether the military police will need to become involved in the investigation. Why isn't there already a Republic investigator helping? So why are they even reporting in? And that's the other thing. They have nothing concrete yet. Why just come to say, yeah, we've got nothing concrete yet. We'll get back to it. Well, maybe they had to gather the entire council to <laughs> tell their investigators by the way, the Senate's gonna want to investigate. They can't do that. What the heck is the problem? Yeah, and then she's, they can't do that. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I didn't know help was so bad. Yeah, oh, that's terrible. If you know, it was the Republic, you have been fighting for for the last how many years? It's like, and it you're like, oh no, we we can't help each other. The they stay over there. They stay out of our business, even though we established in season two that the Republic is involved in Jedi matters. And like, they were literally involved in something as important as the future of the Jedi Order being put at stake. But they can't get involved with a temple bombing? that, you know, included Republic citizens and clones. And then, yeah, it's like, okay, well, if you're so confident that a Jedi didn't do it, then maybe it was a Republic citizen. So, you know, what's wrong with having a Republic investigator? And if you are worried that it's a Jedi, well, then all the more reason to have a Republic investigator because they'll be more objective. Exactly. Like, it's her, stupid on top of stupid on top of stupid. And her being all upset about them getting involved, I think is the show trying to be like, oh, see, this is why the Jedi Council, you know, didn't trust her because she didn't want them involved. It's like, okay, well, why are you having Ahsoka be stupid so that she literally plays right into the thing because that wasn't part of the fugitive. It was all circumstantial stuff rather than he made himself look suspect because he was an idiot. Everything is stupid. Yeah, everything is stupid. I would have thought working for the Jedi paid better. And it's like, okay, so she says that and you think, oh, okay, well, she's kind of waking up to like, oh, you would think that the Jedi would take better care of their employees. But the way she says it is just kind of like, oh, I thought they would, you know, pay more, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's, it's not like, I would have thought the Jedi would pay their employees better. There's something about her tone, again, that's just kind of off. And also that face. And the, you know, yeah, her facial expression and everything like that. But then, in, you know, literally, what, two episodes? Then she's with Ventress, and she's just like, Psh nice place you've got here and it's like okay so do you, do you and she, care about she meets people's? rafa and she quips about her debts she doesn't give a crap about people who are less fortunate than her yeah and and, and like there's no coming to an understanding you know maybe the jedi aren't what i thought they were like it doesn't happen she's just dumping on poor people which we saw her do in season two yeah, such character girl. Oh yeah, totally. So much time here, building up this like tension and suspense. Oh, is there gonna be a bomb? Is something gonna happen? And then nothing happens, but it's like, they could have spent that time elsewhere in the episode on things that actually mattered rather than building up fake suspense for nothing. It's just showing like absolute zero respect for the audience because they're literally wasting the audience's time. And then he's all like, oh no, she's got this protesty thing. And it's like, okay, you can protest the war without blowing up a hangar. And you saw her at the protest. So why is this such a leap? 
Because everything's stupid. Because they wanted to have this, you know, red blinky light that gets faster as he gets closer to, to it. With a bomb! And then, oh, it's not a bomb. The sensors are picking up traces from the disposal. The nano droids were in the food. Okay, so that's actually a bit of a leap. They're talking about a garbage or uh, people have those like things in their sink kind of like a, a, a garbage but it's mostly for for food waste but either which way it's like well it might have not been in the food like you know if it's on his hands and he doesn't realize it because they're nano and then he just you know washes his hands in the sink right now it's going down your your disposal thing if it's in the garbage well yeah again if it gets on him and you know he throws something in the garbage Garbage, right? Like, I kind of remembered it that there was like actual food and then she, you know, scanned the food and so, oh, it's in the food. But no, she says it's in the disposal. It was in the food. And again, such a simple fix. Have some dirty dishes there and she scans it and oh, it's in the food. Wow. Wow. Oh, such a so difficult hard. thing. Oh my goodness. What are you doing here? She goes from a bright room into a dark room and goes, oh. Oh, oh, I was just what about to say. What are you doing here? She, maybe she's uh, like... Is this like, not, the, you sure. know, Frodo scene Arwen, where like, you're in darkness and you see a person of the light, even though both people in that room are closer to the dark side than literally any other Jedi. And it's, oh, so bright. Her body language makes... No sense. None of the body language in this show ever makes sense. Well, Ahsoka's like the worst, but she's now on par with Ahsoka. Which is, you know, a very high bar because Ahsoka's there a lot. I think you mean a very low bar. <laughs> well, to be as bad as Ahsoka, you know, she's this bad rather than just a little bad. She's a lot bad. I guess it depends on how you view the scale. We believe someone set Jakar up and made him the bomb. I want to bring you in for more questioning. Okay, so they now have some very flimsy evidence, suspicions that Letta might be involved. And so Ahsoka's just like, yeah, your husband's dead, he was the bomb. He, she works like he does, and maybe their schedules don't align. And so maybe she's just not around to eat the same meals that he's eating. Or maybe like you already suspected, he planned this on his own and just kept quiet about it. So he fed himself the nanodroids and made sure that she didn't ingest any because he didn't want to hurt his wife. Somebody made your husband the bomb. They immediately jumped to suspecting her. For the sake of the plot, I guess. Yeah, but Which Ahsoka's just being heartless. Writing. And it's crappy writing. And then like Ahsoka is right because Leta decides to bolt here then she kind of adds to her appearance of guilt. But then Ahsoka does the exact same thing. <laughs> and again Ahsoka this great Jedi Padawan. Oh somebody fell on top of me. Help. I can't get up. Yeah no that was pathetic. And now, and then oh, they look how this. awesome she is. And where, where's Anakin, who is also a Jedi, but I guess he's just too slow. <laughs> Old man running along the ground, can't do any fancy jumps, has to push people out of the way. This show is so disrespectful to Anakin. Again, if you have to crap on your male characters to make your female characters look good, that's not a strong female character. That's a Mary Sue. You're not doing the women any favors. Well, well, You're insulting women by saying that men have to be weak in order for them to be strong. That's what I was going to say. It's it's sexist against men because you're you're putting them down, but it's sexist against women because you're saying, well, unless the men suck, women can't look good. Yeah, no, like you're not doing yourself or anyone else any favors there. Stop patting yourself on the back. That's terrible writing. Let us stop! How many times? That's like definitely a ripoff of Spider-Man. The pose, the setting, the everything. Jakar is dead. Nobody ever said he was dead. I hate that. That right there is just how crappy the writing is. Somebody made Jakar the bomb. Nobody said he was dead. Yeah, you, you did. Ahsoka, 
literally just said he was made into the bomb. Are you trying to tell me that he magically survived that? It's not a leap of logic for Letta to hear somebody made Jakar the bomb and think, oh, Jakar is dead. That's not a leap of logic, but the writers are so stupid that they're like, oh, they got her. She said he's dead and they hadn't said anything about that yet. Running proves you had something to do with the bomb. Innocent people run. It is Ahsoka true. Ahsoka literally does it in the next episode, though I wouldn't call her innocent by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Innocent people run all the time because when someone is scared, they do stupid things. And no, that argument does not apply to Ahsoka because she obviously wasn't. Like, there's a difference between fear and panic. And there's a so... difference between fear and distrust. Again, they, they have the droid say fear can make even the most trusting individual irrational. But that's can... bullshnickety <sighs> face. They literally only have him say that to protect Ahsoka's actions. You know, you, you can be afraid and still practice common sense while being afraid. Yeah, if I'm afraid, like I have a phobia, but I trust my husband to help me in those those moments where I'm faced with that phobia. So you, I have fear, but I trust him. And so I'm able to like control myself. I trust he's going to take care of me. He's going to protect me. So. I can be more rational in my irrational fear because a phobia is an irrational fear. So really like Ahsoka wasn't experiencing fear or panic when she ran like an idiot. She's she just, just not being trust distrustful. She's not trusting the council. She's not trusting Anakin. Yeah, it goes to show how little respect she has for the Jedi as a whole, again. People blamed Jedi because of you. People were killed because of you. Again, priorities. She says, oh, people blame the Jedi because of you. People were killed because of you. Be the the first one. thing out of your mouth is usually the thing that you care about more. And so the fact that she listed in that order, it's like, how dare you make the Jedi look bad? This is the worst thing you could possibly do. Yeah, and it's all about her again because she's a Jedi. It, yeah, she's a Jedi. Yeah, that's my reputation. That's my title that you're dragging through the mud. And again, it shows that all she cares about is appearances. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a wonderful character for kids to look up to. A shallow bitch. You can't prove anything. Yeah, Leta gives the yes, I'm guilty line. You can't prove anything. But like, look at Ahsoka's face. She's like, how dare you touch me? She just was like pointing in Leta's face like this. So Leta grabs her arm and pulls it away. And Le and Ahsoka's face right here is his like a literal shock. Oh my God. She, she, how dare you touch you oh, touched oh, me? Oh, that's a newbie! Chicago money and did it alone. Apparently he didn't act at all. It's like, okay, but you just found out that Jakar was completely oblivious or, you know, probably oblivious. They haven't actually questioned Letta as to whether he knew. But like, given that it's like, oh, I fed them to Jakar, it kind of implies that Jakar unknowingly was... So Jakar didn't know anything about it. And they're like, oh, well, he obviously acted alone. No need to investigate the Jedi. What about Letta? Letta's the actual suspect. Did she work alone? You know, this this is just a whole episode of the worst investigative skills ever. This is like, oh, one of the nursing home residents has died and we suspect that they were murdered. Let's get some of the nursing staff to investigate. It's like, well, obviously they're not trained to investigate. So maybe we should, you know, get an actual investigator? Awful idea! Which then again leads to the question, okay, is this, like, this droid said he's an investigator. I guess there's a difference between investigation and actual detective work. Because, like, yeah, he's been, like, going over the data and stuff like that, but he hasn't really been doing any detective stuff other than when he questioned the victims. But it's like, okay, well, does he not leave the temple? Which is part of what made me think, oh, he's the Jedi's droid for these kinds of things. 
Everything is a mess. Oh, this person who had no idea that they were being turned into a bomb acted alone. So we're good, guys. <laughs> this oh, is wow. not good writing. No. It has not been good writing for the entirety of the series. But this arc, which so many fans point to as like this like mind-blowing finale, no, it's just as crappy as everything else. If not more so because it has Ahsoka in it. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, Russo. Good job. And then they're all like, oh, look, the Jedi did a good job. Public opinion is swaying against the Jedi. Show versus tell. All of a sudden, out of the blue, Mace is like, oh, public opinion is swaying against the Jedi. Since when? Since this episode. Yeah, literally. Since this episode. That's, that's it. Wow, good writing. I can see all the forethought that you clearly put into this just like all the forethought that they put into the sequels this is as bad as the sequels if you dump on the sequels but praise this you are a complete hypocrite because there's no difference between the writing it's literally just as bad you've got a mary sue main character and crappy writing i mean there's a little more to it than that but those are the main things that people dump on for the sequels so why bother listing more there you go i'm relieved we solved this case but i don't know how i would have felt if a jedi was really behind this oh we caught somebody who's not a jedi investigation stops here wow we've got a scapegoat to pin it on we're done I don't know how I would have felt if it was a Jedi. Oh man, that'd be so bad. Good thing we're not gonna dig any deeper. Yeah, she's like, I don't know how I would have felt. But then like, at the end of the finale, the reason she leaves is not because she found out a Jedi was behind. We don't actually get to see any reaction from her. There's no like processing of the fact that it was Barris. That's like completely like glossed over. Yeah. They focus on the fact she's upset because the, the council thought it was her because she ran, which apparently, according to her own words, proves you have something to do with the bomb. You know, Barris is just like completely swept under the rug. And yeah. it's so they BS. They never deal with it. Because they tried to set Ahsoka and Barris up as these great friends and they're such good gal pals and everything. And then Barris literally betrays Ahsoka. You barely see and a reaction. Ahsoka. She's more caught up in the fact, oh, the Jedi Council oh, didn't trust me. They so didn't I treat to... me special. I didn't get special treatment. There are going to be Jedi who disappoint us, Ahsoka. But as long as we know there are good Jedi who fight for what's right, makes it all worthwhile. This is the second time in this episode he's reminding her, hey, Jedi are are going to disappoint you, but that's not what's, you know, like... Yeah, no, like... That's not gonna make Jedi or break the Jedi aren't order. Jedi infallible. So much jumping back and forth with her, because, yeah, she goes from, the Jedi are infallible, to, oh, the Jedi suck. He's like, you know, as long as there are members who are honestly, like, doing the right thing for the right reasons. Why is that kid standing in the middle of a hallway? Swinging a lightsaber? Swinging lights. a lightsaber? No, well, no, having no. a helmet blinding him, and there's people standing right next to him? That feels like an accident waiting. Why is he here training with the other kids? That is so random. What is that? Why is that there? You really are losing it. I'm sorry. This has been taking its toll on you. Maybe we should just end after the season finale. This show is awful. Terrible. Disgusting. See you next week. Of course. Oh, I guess you'll want one of these. Uh, actually, not really. Uh, no. And then her face. I missed her face. I was looking at a cute cat. You you know what her face looks like. Though. Yeah, I know. We're on season five. I'm getting worn down. Oh, <laughs> My okay. sanity is slipping. Suffer with me. Suffer. No.